That morning, we were briefed two days before the invasion as to what to do. And that morning, about five o'clock, they dropped five of our boats off the ship and we were kind of basically on our own to go to one command ship to get orders to do what we were supposed to do. That night was a tough night because we had got in that storm and LSTs being flat bottom, we were like a cork up and down when they dropped us boats off in the water, you have to be careful because uh, you don't come back up and hit the ship on a wave, could tip you over. But we got the five boats in, no problem. In my memory, I think an APC, American Personnel Carrier, was like a troop ship. 28 was the number that stays with me all the time. And we picked up maybe 35 soldiers and headed into the beach. And the beach was such a mess that we were waiting for the beach master to flag us to come into that particular area. So we had to wait. Maybe the first time that I was on the beach might have been 6.30 and unloaded the first group of Army personnel. I think there were Canadians, the first group that we dropped off and then they just told us keep going back until there was no more. They told us that was all that were going to be taken off that ship. All I can remember that in front of us was a big hill and there was a lot of boom and banging going on and, and I think to myself that we were 18 years old and we didn't know what the heck we were doing or what was going on. And just thank God that today we're still here to talk about it. We, we were lucky. The, the, the beach was in, not the beach that we had been training to hit. You know, there was still so many obstacles that were on the beach. Those things that looked like railroad ties that if you weren't careful, you could put a hole in the bottom of the boat very easily. Then there was a lot of resistance up in front of us and then we got into trouble that the soldiers didn't want to get out of the boat. And we would be backing off the beach with 10 or 15 soldiers still in the boat. And they would go out, pick up another 10 or 15 and then make, make another trip back in. When things quieted down, we were getting ready for the night. I guess they, we were assigned to some 40 millimeter anti-aircraft barges that we had to drop off signals for the airplanes at night to not shoot at the recognition flares that off aircraft would be dropping. I think the first night on the beach for us was the worst 
than going down the beach the first time. They dropped, I think the word is incinerary bomb. It looked like a big, big round beach ball and it would light the sky up like floodlights and they would shoot the 40 millimeter guns up to try to break it up. But when that thing hit the water, it would explode with tons of shrapnel. And the sides of our boat had metal over the wood and it would sound like machine gun fire when that shrapnel would hit the sides of the boat. We had no idea that there was all these areas that was going on until afterwards. We, the people that, we got involved with the English Navy on those barges that we dropped off of the requisition signals every day with, and that, and that was our job. And they kept us informed as to what was going on. Mm -hmm. And we would make a run in the morning and another one late in the afternoon. One of the toughest things for us was that when we would come across parts of bodies floating, and we would have to report them in. And they had special people that picked them up. That never goes away. It stays with you all the time. I, when flashbacks come back, I see arms, legs, bodies. But I've kind of learn to live with it and accept it. Our training in Little Creek and Fort Pierce, Florida, I've always said that was the best training that we could handle pretty near anything. Mm -hmm. And I think all the boys on our ship agreed to it.